This is a performing songwriter, and my name is Ray Naylor. My guest today is Jack Murray. Originally from Tennessee and now living in Bartow, Pennsylvania, Jack has a long history of songwriting, performing solo and in bands, recording, and more. He's open for artists including Chris Smith, The Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Jonathan Edwards, and more. I'll be back to talk to Jack in a few minutes, but here he is singing one of his original songs here on The Performing Songwriter. Well, my name is Jack Murray, and the song's called I Just Want to Hear It From You. I went out, set the world on fire, bring back a medal or two. I'll be the one that they all admire, just want to hear from you. If all of the love in the world was mine, I'd tell you what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't open up the valentines, just want to hear it from you. Yeah, I just want to hear it from you. Just want to hear it from you. Just as long as the world goes round, just want to hear from you. So let them say what they will. I don't care if they do. Tell me I'm a toast or the talk of the town. Just want to hear from you. If I woke up as the king of the world, made everybody's dreams come true. I wouldn't want to thank you, this girl just want to hear from you. If I was a star on the great wide way, got all the raven reviews. I wouldn't read a word they say, just want to hear it from you. Yeah, I just want to hear it from you. Just want to hear it from you. Just as long as the world goes round, just want to hear it from you. So let them say what they want. Baby, I don't care if they do Tell me I'm the toast or the talk of the town Just want to hear it from you Yeah, I just want to hear it from you Just want to hear it tonight Three little words when the sun goes down Make it all turn out right So let them say what they will Baby, I don't care if they do Tell me I'm the toast or the talk of the town I just want to hear it from you Every night when the sun goes down I just want to hear it from you Jack Murray, thanks for coming way down from Bartow, which is probably an hour or so, I guess, right? Yeah, a little at least, bit more. At yeah. least. Um, I was reading, I guess, on your website that you had a hiatus for music for a period of time. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. What was that all about, and what what drove you to come back? I was writing a bunch of songs, and I started taking them down to Nashville, and I was painfully aware of the difference between what I was taking them and what was and what my heroes were writing. I think there's a chasm. I had no idea how to bridge the chasm. There's mostly a lot of clever stuff. But I got lucky and somebody in Alabama actually recorded one of my songs. It never got released, but that same song called Don't Take Much had been recorded three, four other times and on the radio by a guy named Peter Isaacson, which kind of compounded my issues because here I'm being rewarded for being kind of a hack because I really felt like I just was really coming up short and where people like Christopherson and Roger Miller and Harlan Howard and all these guys were writing these great songs and I was kind of trying to fake it so I just kind of stopped for a while, raised two daughters and thought I'd try it again later if spirit moved me to do so. I mentioned in the introduction that you grew up in Tennessee. I was born there, yeah. And I wanted to ask you, how long did you live there? 
probably only three years. My dad was, um, he met my mother in the FBI in Washington, D.C. She's a farm girl from from Hubbard, Iowa, and that's my mom on the cover of this okay. CD. And she was there working in the State Department. She heard they were, they were paying well at the FBI, went over to work there, and my dad was there as an FBI trainee. And they hit it off. And World War II broke out, and so he went to the Philippines, came back and, and moved back to Tennessee, where he's from, and uh, he got an offer to coach football because he had a, a nine-year college football career. <laughs> interrupted by World War II. Uh -huh. When he finished up, they were at championship season. He was a football coach, ended up coaching for Sevier County High School, which turns out to be Dolly Parton's alma mater also. So he was a football coach the year I was born in Sevierville, Tennessee. So. And couldn't make a living or make pay enough bills with coaching football, so he rejoined the FBI. Then he bounced around. We ended up in uh, Pennsylvania. Okay. Doylestown. Right? Doylestown, yeah. Now, you mentioned that you had written a song that was recorded. Mm -hmm. Any of other your songs uh, ended up being recorded by uh, other artists? Uh, there's uh, two others. One was called... I can't remember what it was called. There's a guy named Ronnie Sessions. He had a couple minor country hits. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on that one. <laughs> but, uh, um, a bunch of them were kind of recorded and were being held for release, but I think that one and uh, Don't Take Much, the only ones that were actually were released as singles. And Don't Take Much got on uh, Billboard charts for, I think, six weeks. Peaked at 61 with a bullet. Cool. The next week it had an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> Vanished in short order. But that was, it's kind of fun hearing it. But it was fun to brag to your friends and relatives mm -hmm. about it, but it didn't wasn't gratifying because I just felt like that was really substandard and not really what I was capable of. I just know how to bridge the gap. Well, when did you come back in terms of uh, continuing to write songs and perform? Uh, I started uh, playing every Tuesday night at a friend's house near um, near where I live now. Just kind of stay in shape. And then I started co-hosting a jam about 15 years ago and had a lot of personal calamities, a lot of loss, loss. I went through a really unpleasant divorce really pretty awful divorce. I, I lost both my parents and then my fiance died. So, it was mm. like, so wow. all this, I was just trying to, I started using songwriting as a way of processing a lot of, a lot of guilt or a lot of grief, I guess, and um, just a lot of, and ended up with a whole lot of songs that nobody's ever gonna hear because it's mostly therapeutic. But after a while you start to realize, well, how? Maybe I'm kind of bridging that gap I couldn't figure out how to cross years ago because you're dealing with very real emotional things. And then you kind of start asking other questions like, how do I make this accessible or useful or entertaining or meaningful to somebody else? And it's not just all about feel my pain or, you know, it was, it became, I'm going to make it less egocentric, you know, just like just get, get over yourself and make it, make something useful. <laughs> now you've been part of a songwriter's round, haven't you? Yeah, in fact, that's how I met my wife, Ramona. We, I had been commuting back and forth to Nashville for years off and on. I took a, a break for a while, but I really got hooked on the uh, songwriters in the round format, and I saw a lot of my heroes, and and uh, I think one of the big ones was, was Tom Schuyler, who I r really admire, and then Craig Bickhart, and mm -hmm. Don Henry, and Jack Sundrud, and and um, Tony Arata, like some just great writers. And I always wondered why there was such a gap between the world of singer-songwriters I was familiar with from old folk clubs, Second Fred and mm -hmm. Main Point, and what the Nashville singer-songwriters were doing. Because for my money, they were doing it, in many cases, a whole lot better. It was like, how come those two universes never really meet? Mm -hmm. And then uh, my friend Harriet Kiriakis, she uh, told me that uh, <clears throat> they were having one of those in the rounds at Godfrey Daniels. It was put together by Larry Ahern, who's an old friend of my brother's. Who's been on the show. Larry, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, watch for Larry Ahern. <laughs> but um, I thought, well, it's about time they're having the song Nashville songwriter caliber writing up here in, in folk clubs. I think this is a nice little overdue marriage, I'd say. And uh, it was great, and I was really just 
saved me a 15-hour drive to Nashville to see that. <laughs> <laughs> and I met Ramona, so that really became a nice little courtship and ha happy ending. In addition to performing solo, mm -hmm. you also have been in bands. Yeah, I've been in bands since, uh, I guess, in high school. I was in a band called Black Flag. I was in Philadelphia clubs years ago. Mm -hmm. we play with. And then I, uh, I think that band kind of retired by popular demand. And uh, <laughs> I started joining, um, looking for country bands. I really got hooked on country music. And when you're playing folk clubs, the best you can really expect is kind of polite applause. And folk clubs or blues, blues clubs or honky tonks, you get some actual physical action, people dancing around and all kinds of more interactive types, type of uh, reactions. I, meant, I mentioned some of the people that you've shared stage with over the years. Uh -huh. Any like, people that really stand out that was a special night for you? Uh, one was Joe Ely. He's a Texas singer-songwriter, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought he was great. I'm getting to uh, open in, a, I think, in a couple weeks at Sellersville Theater for um, Larry Campbell. You know, Larry Campbell and Teresa Williams. They're, uh, uh, I think the people who were actually nicest to me, you kind of hope that the headliner is going to pay attention to what you're doing. In most cases, that doesn't happen. But a couple of notable exceptions were um, uh, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, and um, they were actually backstage saying, Jeff Hanna in particular, he was saying really nice things. He was actually paying attention to my songs and was very complimentary in very specific ways. So I thought, well, he really is paying attention here. But he's a great writer in his own right. Chris Smither, I got one of the oddest compliments. He was backstage and he was going, he says, I love those little two and three minute hit and run songs of yours. Says, when I write these six and seven minute songs, I hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. He took us to dinner, Ramon and I did dinner at the, at the Washington house next door. The, and I found out in the course of conversation that his dad and my dad were both FBI agents in the same office the oh, same wow. year in, in Washington, D.C. I think his dad bailed out after seven years, but uh, mine went on to a 20 year career. So We're going to hear some more of your songs. Great. And before we do, I have a slideshow of our next guest. His name is Jeff Sund. And uh, we're going to play one of his songs and. Uh, couple pictures of him over top, and then Jack will be back to sing some more songs. Okay. How many times must I fall in love? Think she was the one. How many lives must one man have? Out a gun. I'm one corner away from the last corner. How many corners must I turn? Blue movies and cigarettes. Time on. I'm one corner away from the last corner How many corners must I turn? Saw 
You said she won't be back Lights out at the depot The chain across the door Lights out at the depot The chain across the door They said the moonlight special Ain't coming back no more You left the trunk load of trouble You left your sack of shame You left your trunk load of trouble You left your sack of shame I could have been your red cap, baby Baby, if you called my name I walked down to the jailhouse About the break of day I walked down to the jailhouse About the break of day Said lock me up Mr. Jackson Throw that key away Well the judge called the jailer So let the man go free Say hey Mr. Jackson let the man go free I just to roll back over I told him let me be Some fool try to tell you that lonesome blues ain't bad. Some fool try to tell you the lonesome blues ain't bad. Well, it must have been something, but something else he had. This one is for Ramona, it's called Blue Bonnet Girl.
And the rose caught up yonder I don't want to go No, I don't want to go No, I don't want to go Cause I don't need another heaven Cause I found one in this world In the eyes of a blue bonnet One of my favorite songwriters is my brother Paul. He and I wrote this song together in a rather unconventional manner, but I think we both like how it turned out. It's called Used to Be a River. Used to be a river deep in dancing waters, nothing like you've ever seen before. There used to be a river, but there's no river anymore. I would slip beneath her waters and let her channels take me. Anywhere but where I've been before There used to be a river There's no river anymore But look at all the bluebells How the willow grew so tall It's still as green as Eden isn't like she wasn't here at all So I'll sleep beneath the willow And dream of dancing waters here before There used to be a river There's no river anymore Bartow, PA, which is up mm -hmm. near, not too far from Allentown. Yeah, it's kind of about half an hour south of Allentown. And you ran a jam for a period of time? I still do, in so fact. Do. What I, talk uh, about that. It's at the uh, place called The Other Farm and Forge, which it's a little, uh, it starts a coffee shop now. It's like a gourmet pizza place and microbrewery, but it's, it's a great little place. It's right on the main drag in Boyertown. Me and my bandmate, neighbor, and friend, Nick Franklick, 
co-host it every week. Nick is a great bass player. He's played with pretty much everybody you can name. He uh, was in a band called The, uh, the Electric Farm. They made a couple oh, yeah. of re really good records. Yeah. And we have, uh, and one of my other cohorts, one of my bandmates, my current band is called The uh, Blue Tarp Wranglers, mm -hmm. which features Nick and a guy named Alan Landis, who I've played with for, I think, probably 40 years. Wow. Great guitar player. He plays a little bit like Billy Bremner from Rockpile or uh, Albert Lee a little bit. And our drummer is... Uh, Josh Kanuski, who we share with the David Bromberg band, because okay. we, we try to book our gigs selectively Separate. when Josh is around. But we have a deep bench of great drummers to draw from, which I'm truly grateful for. Now, I have uh, one of your CDs. Is this uh, your first CD, or is this one that just this came my out? This my second one. That's not officially released. That's a sneak preview copy, which is... It's called a... It's called a... The View from... Mount Juliet. And uh, when will it be released? Uh, probably, um, hopefully by end of June. Okay. You're going to have a release party and all that stuff? Yeah, we're going to have a, we got a gig at Godfrey Daniels later on in the fall, uh -huh. early, early fall, but it, quite a few festival gigs this summer, so we'll probably. But we've been, re me and uh, Josh and Nick and Alan and Dave and everybody have been re recording this up at a studio in New Jerusalem for five years. New Jerusalem actually is a suburb of Kutztown. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> I went to Nashville to work with a guy named Tom Yutz, who's been recommended to me by numerous friends from down there. So the guy works really fast and might just be the kind of therapy you need, because I tend to get really overly involved in recordings and redo things over and over. <laughs> so he works really fast, so be prepared. So I went down there, cut two or three songs, we had a half a, half a day sessions booked, and uh, end up recording everything, all ten songs oh, in wow. th three and a half hours. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and these guys sound like they knew these songs in their sleep, and, and they're oh, great, yeah, great players. Oh, yeah, those guys sound there. I knew they worked like that, but Tom himself is such a dervish. He has this incredible sense of focus and uh, great instincts. He's also a great flat-picking guitar player. He's... he's, he's a red hot bluegrass producer right now. In fact, he has the number one bluegrass record on the charts at the moment called Coon Dog Cemetery. <laughs> I told him with a title like that, you don't even need the song. <laughs> <laughs> but we did that the whole thing in um, half a day wow. with great players. Wow. It, now they have the CD done. Mm -hmm. Any future plans as far as your music goes that you're looking at? Uh, just to uh, write more songs. Part of this kind of uncorked a lot of backed up songs. I kept kind of doing them and redoing them and making myself and friends crazy in the process. But it, it did kind of open up free up hard drive space, in the, uh -huh. if I can use that metaphor. And uh, so a whole bunch of new songs are starting to, to stir. So That's yeah, good. Take, yeah, that's real good. That's a good feeling. If people want to learn more about you and your music, um, what's the best way for them uh, to do that? Probably uh, you can go to Facebook. I have a page called Jack Murray and the Blue Tarp Wranglers. And on Reverb Nation, I think everything on this record and on my first record called Then There's That can be heard on the Reverb Nation. You can buy stuff on CD Baby and on iTunes, and you can hear most of the stuff on iTunes. This one probably not yet, but the first one, so. Okay. Jack Murray, thank you for coming in, uh, talking, singing a bunch of your songs. Thank you, Ray. It's a pleasure to be here. Okay. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks with Jeff Sund. See you then. <laughs>